Welcome back, High Level listeners, to week four, day two of our English for Travel speaking course. Today's video will focus on vocabulary and key expressions. I know this is one of the favorite videos of most of our students. We're here to help take your travel English to the next level with real American and British English. I'm Kat, the American voice here on High Level Listening. And I'm Mark, the British voice, and today's class in our English for Travel course is a great way to expand your English vocabulary skills. We'll be releasing a new video each day, Monday to Friday, on YouTube for free all this month. But if you don't want to wait, you can get all five of this week's videos today by purchasing the full English for Travel course on our High Level Listening store. On top of that, you get downloads, MP3s, worksheet pages. I think at this point, we're up to almost 60 workbook pages, phrase lists, pronunciation guides, and homework activities. Of course, with the vocabulary list, you also get a picture dictionary. So those of you who like to have pictures next to your vocabulary, that should be very helpful as well. You can click the link below in the description and get all of that right now. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, in our first class, you heard the entire spoken conversation talking about taking public transport while on vacation. And now we'll explain the most useful vocabulary phrases and expressions in more detail. Most of these phrases can be commonly used in both American and British English, but if not, we'll make it clear that there's a difference between the US and the UK. And again, as Kat mentioned, these phrases are all in a picture dictionary in the bonus materials with the course. So here's vocabulary phrase number one. Give me some pointers. Can you give me some pointers? So point is point with your finger, but can also mean give me some help. Give me some tips or give me some advice. Often it's used with can you. It's a little bit more casual. So can you give me some pointers? Can you help me in the dialogue? Hi there. Could you give me some pointers on getting around the area near the ferry terminal? You can ask for help or advice in any situation after the phrase. Can you give me some pointers on? Can you give me some pointers about are the prepositions? The second half of the sentence I'm asking, could you give me some pointers on getting around the area? Getting around the area. Now, remember, this dialogue is about public transportation. When I ask about getting around, I mean using public transportation or moving or traveling around in a place. So getting around is a common way to say, how do I use public transportation? How do I get around? getting around the area, moving or traveling in a place. So I said in the dialogue, could you give me some pointers on getting around the area? Getting around the area, so moving, traveling. I had a car in this situation. So getting around the area near the ferry terminal. That's the next phrase, ferry terminal. So the place where ferries stop, when they arrive, where you get on board, and then travel over some water is the ferry terminal. There is another kind of transport that uses terminal, the bus terminal. It's usually a place where lots of different buses or ferries meet. You can buy tickets and you can get on. You get on a ferry like you get on a bus. So the ferry terminal, you probably need one to go over a river or get to an island somewhere. Ferry terminals are popular in many touristy destinations. So in the dialogue, Kat said, we rented a car and we need to find a place to park near the terminal. It's a good example to also use your articles. The ferry terminal is the mm. one you want to get to or the main one in the area. So it's often the ferry terminal or just the terminal and people will understand where you mean. So, Mark, a lot of students ask me usually, what's the difference between a terminal and just a stop, like a bus stop or a bus terminal? Kind of what's the difference there? Yeah, the terminal is the biggest building. It's the main center where all the buses eventually stop. Maybe it's where they change drivers. But a bus stop is just one of many small stops along its route. 
so the bus will stop, 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 and then reach the terminal at the end. Mm -hmm. Same with ferries. They'll start at the terminal, go on two or three stops, and then finish at another terminal. So terminal means the end. So it's where the bus route starts or the route stops. So our next phrase, I'm a bit turned around or I'm a little turned around. Now, sometimes you can simply say, I'm lost, I'm lost. But if you're not lost yet, but you're feeling a little confused, we use this phrase, I'm turned around. I'm turned around. That means I'm a little lost, I'm a little confused, and I'm not sure which direction to go in, okay? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm a little turned around. I'm not completely lost. I, I kind of have some idea of where I am, but I'm a little turned around. I thought it was this way, but maybe it's that way. So this is a good way to introduce why you need some help. I'm a little turned around. I'm a bit turned around. I think it's another good example where English speakers like to make problems smaller. Because mm, if you mm -hmm. say, I'm lost, it sounds <laughs> like you really need help. Like maybe call the police or something. Mm -hmm. It sounds quite serious. But if we make the problem smaller, I'm a bit turned around. It sounds less serious and less urgent, and we prefer that. I think this is more of an American phrase. I think in the mm. UK, I would say, I'm a little bit lost. Mm, Not okay. I'm lost, I'm a little bit lost. We make all okay. the problems smaller. <laughs> so again, it doesn't sound so urgent. You don't need the police. I'm just a little bit lost, that's all. Another British American difference is also here. Kat said, we rented a car. And that's fine if you say that in England, people will understand you. In England, though, I think most people would say we hired a car. Mm. So if you hire something, you rent something. So you can hire a flat or hire an apartment, hire a boat, hire a car, hire a scooter, or rent an apartment, rent a car, rent a scooter. It's the same thing, just a different word. So if I was in Kat's position in the dialogue, so we hired a car and we need to find a place to park near the terminal. Now, I know when Mark uses you hire a car, H-I-R-E, hire. Um, so, you know, you can hire a person for a job, right? Um, so that means that they mm. get the job. So spelled the same, H-I-R-E. Now, the next one, again, we've had a few more differences in our dialogue between American and British English and this one. So the main parking area or the main car park. Okay, so the American one, I'll start with that. The main parking area. So the main parking area is the, the big area, the most obvious one, the one that's the biggest one, it's right next to the terminal, okay? That's the main parking area. So this is the primary place where most cars go to park. My problem was I thought that the main parking area looks pretty expensive. It looks really expensive, actually. So I was a little worried that, um, you know, maybe it would be too expensive for me. So when I say the main parking area looks pretty expensive, Mark would probably say what? The main car park looks quite expensive. <laughs> so that's just the difference between parking area, parking lot, and car park car park like your cars get to go play at the park for the day <laughs> uh, yeah i imagine going down the slide and going uh -huh. on the swings like yeah, Wee. yeah these little car cars park. having fun yeah. yes <laughs> the next phrase a cheaper spot in the dialogue cat said is there a cheaper spot nearby spot is a really useful word a spot is a place and a spot can be all kinds of different places. It could be a park, a restaurant, a car park. It could be anywhere you need to go. It could be a quiet spot with no people. It could be a busy spot with a lot of atmosphere and nightlife. A spot can really be anywhere. So Kat's looking for a car park or another one. You can also call that a spot. So I'm looking for a cheaper car park. 
I'm looking for a cheaper spot. You can also do this if you're asking for a restaurant recommendation. Is there a local spot we can have lunch? Do you know any cool spots to buy a cocktail? Anywhere can be a spot. So super flexible word. So Mark tells me instead of parking at the main parking area, just drive past it. Just drive past it. Okay, so this means I'm going to keep driving. Okay, you see it? You see it? Oh, okay, okay, we're going. We, we keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. So we're going to drive past it. Go past it. Drive past it. Um, walk past it. That means keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop, okay? So instead of parking at the main parking area, just drive past it. Keep going. Keep driving. Next vocabulary item is parking attendants. Parking attendants are people, and they're people who help you park your car, especially if it's a very busy place or there's lots of cars, or maybe you can't find a spot. Then there's someone, usually in a high-vis orange or yellow jacket, and directing you where to go. So the parking attendants will be in busy tourist areas because there are lots of tourists in their hired cars. But my advice was actually don't worry about the parking attendants trying to direct you. I've been in situations before in a car and I'm in a busy tourist area and parking attendants even stand in front of the car and try to push you or force you or encourage you to go into a certain spot. Just don't worry about them. <laughs> Drive past them. Continue. And yeah, they'll try to direct you. But don't worry about the parking attendants. Just drive past them. Just like Mark said, the parking attendant is the person who helps you. And we, they will direct you. So Mark says direct you. And I more naturally say direct, uh -huh. direct you. So to direct someone or give them directions is to show them where to go. So pointing this way, you know, they're directing you, okay? Or sometimes they tell you to go this way, so they're directing you. If there's an accident, the police will redirect you. So make you go in a different way, in a different direction, right? So don't worry about the parking attendants trying to direct you. Just say, no thanks, no thanks, I'm okay, I'm okay, no thanks, and move on keep going yeah keep the windows up like, no yeah okay we've got another british american difference here i said you'll be a bit further away from the ferry terminal you'll be a bit further away so further is a longer or larger distance further and further and further is longer and longer so in the uk I think the majority of people say further. It's further away. Uh, yes, it's a little bit further. Just two minutes further and you'll arrive. But do people in the States use a different word? For some reason, naturally, I want to say farther, farther. And I did look this up because when I looked at the sentence, I thought that doesn't sound quite like what I would say. Now, sometimes we break grammar rules in English, and that's okay. If you say further or farther, especially in an American accent, you can't even hear the difference. So don't worry too much about the rule. It's okay. We'll probably break the rule anyway. Might be too hard to remember. So further, it's very American with our American R. Further, farther, further farther. Can you do both, Mark? A uh, further, farther. Further, farther. Uh -huh. In a British accent, it sounds like mum and dad, mother, and father. It it's exactly oh, the same pronunciation. Maybe that's why you probably would say further then, and it sounds more natural to say mm. that. It's like, it's, it's father. Yes, honey? No, not you, dad. <laughs> uh Your son? No. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We avoid all this confusion that way. Yeah, but yeah exactly. So I'm from the UK, so I said, you'll be a bit further away from the ferry further. terminal. Mm -hmm. Father, 
further, <laughs> further, <laughs> farther. Now, I don't usually mind my accent, but that one, it does sound nicer in British English. Further, farther, further, farther. <laughs> <laughs> Is it much further? Yeah, uh -huh. we have kids in the back. Uh -huh. Yes. So let's talk about the locals, the locals. Now, if you consider yourself a local, you live there and you have lived there for a long time. Maybe you were born there. Maybe you moved there five or 10 years ago and you love the place and you live there. So these are the locals, your local bar, your local restaurant. The locals are the people. So the locals are the people who live in the area. They're not tourists. They live there all the time. So it's where all the locals park. That means if you know, because you live here, it's where all the locals park. That's what, you know, what would a local do? What would a local do? You know, I want, I don't want to do the touristy things. I, what does a local do? Someone who lives here, what do they do? Right, so I want to go where the locals go. I want to mm -hmm. eat where the locals eat. Not these tourist traps with their expensive prices. The locals always know how to do things cheaper and more easily. So yeah, where the locals. And tastier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, usually, yeah. Okay, so I gave Kat some advice about where to park her car. She said, oh, great. That's exactly what I was looking for. That's exactly what I was looking for. Mm. This is a really nice way to respond to advice or help. If someone gives you a good recommendation and it's perfect. If you're looking for a restaurant and they recommend a cheap local one, that's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. Or looking for parking. I recommended a cheaper, better one for locals. That's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. Our next two words, there's two different words, touts and scalpers. Now, I would say that I don't have a good, uh, you know, feeling about either of these words. They're both a bit negative. They're salespeople, salespeople, touts and scalpers. Scalpers, uh, really kind of an icky word because these are people selling tickets unofficially. Maybe they're reselling tickets at a higher price. So you'll see a load of touts and scalpers trying to sell you tickets. When someone tells me these words, I'm like, okay, watch out or, you know, get a better deal or try to haggle a little bit. Touts and scalpers, they are salespeople, but sometimes they can be very intense trying to sell, um, you know, very passionately and they can sometimes make you feel a little uncomfortable. Yes, you'll often find them outside of stadiums. If there's a big sports match or if there's a concert and you don't have a ticket, you can go to the stadium on the day and maybe a scalper or a tout is waiting outside trying to sell tickets to people who are kind of desperate and need one at the last minute. But yeah, often these tickets are really expensive. They're more expensive than usual or they should be. So we don't recommend that. Instead, I recommended the official ticket booth. The full sentence was just ignore them and head straight to the official ticket booth inside. So you have the official booth with reasonable, fair prices. And then in front of them, you have the touts and the scalpers selling you more expensive tickets. But they're in front, they're a bit aggressive. So sometimes they intimidate or overwhelm tourists and they just panic and buy one. So you don't want to do that. Just ignore the touts and the scalpers and head straight to the official ticket booth inside. Now, because we're tourists, sometimes we don't always know how much something is. So if a tout or a scalper says, yes, the tickets are $10. Well, if I go to the official ticket booth and the tickets are $5, that person is trying to rip me off. So I don't want to get ripped off. And to get ripped off is when someone charges you more money because they think you'll pay for it. They think you don't know. They think that you're just a tourist. You don't know how much the prices are. So they're going to charge you so much more and then they will rip you off. Okay, so I don't want to get ripped off. I don't want to get charged too much money. 
Next phrase. Uh, we're talking about ferries and ferry terminals. When you will get on the ferry, you will go across some water and arrive on the other side. I think we're talking about a body of water, a river or a lake on the other side. On the other side is across the water and it's your destination. So Kat said, after I get my ticket and take the ferry across, what's the best way to get around on the other side? On the other side is uh, around her destination. Maybe it's an island or just another place. So when I get to the other side, when I'm on the other side, when I arrive on the other side, what should I do? So oh, the suggestion from Mark, the local, is to stick to taxis. Um, yes, there are both, but my advice would be to stick to the taxis. So if you stick to someone or stick to something, you only use that. You only do that. Okay, so stick. I would stick to taxis. Maybe they're safer, more reliable, and they're just the best choice. So maybe you should only use the taxis. Stick to taxis. Another official place that you should go to if you don't want to get ripped off. We've heard the official ticket booth, and I also recommended the official rank. Rank is part of taxi rank. The taxi rank is a designated place where all the taxis stop and wait for passengers. You can find a taxi rank in front of ferry terminals, outside airports, you come out of the doors and it's taxi, 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 all lined up. And you can see, you could get in the one at the front. That is a taxi rank. So there's an official rank. Maybe all the taxis are the same color or they all have the same number on the side. So you know that you can trust them. They're regulated. The drivers are professional and they should charge you a fair price. So I said to Kat, Remember to only use the taxis from the official rank. I think that's a word we only use with taxis. I don't use that with bus or anything else. It's just a taxi rank, the line of taxis. So the next phrase, an all day travel pass, an all day travel pass. So that means that you get a ticket and you can use it all day. Go here, go there, go back, go again. You can use it all day. So this is an all day travel pass. You might have these for public transportation, maybe an all day museum pass, an all day travel pass, an all day bus pass. And then you can use this ticket, just keep a hold of it, all day when you're going around. So it's actually a pretty good deal. Yes, another way to say a good deal is economical. In the dialogue, it's more economical if you're making multiple trips. Economical is cheaper or it's good value. You're saving money or you're spending as little as possible. So yes, it's cheap, it's economical, it's more economical. It's an economical way of getting around. It's another word for cheaper, better value. For American English, we usually say eh. Economical. Economical. Economical for yeah. American English. So just like Mark said, it's it's more economical if you're making multiple trips. Multiple trips, multiple means more than one. OK, so two trips, maybe it's not worth it. But for multiple trips, more than a few, more than a couple, multiple. It's more economical if you're making multiple trips, more than one. Another phrase that needs an article, we mentioned the ferry terminal, and now we're talking about the staff. Again, British accent here, the staff, that long A, the staff are the people who work in a place. We need the to mean that it's the ones in the place I'm in, or the workers in the place I'm in. So if I'm in a restaurant, the staff, are the waiters, servers, bartenders. If I'm in a ferry terminal, the staff are the people selling tickets behind the booth or the attendants on the ship. So the staff. I said to Kat, just ask the staff and they'll point you in the right direction. 
So for the next phrase, point you in the right direction. Now it's actually kind of rude to point, um, but it is kind of funny the way that we set up the grammar. So if I point someone in the right direction, that means I show someone where to go, okay? So I don't point at you, I point you, so it's like I move you, okay? Here we go, this is the right direction. Here you go, this is the right direction. So I point you in the right direction, okay? All right, go. <laughs> so I show you where to go, I guide you, I point you in the right direction, I show you where to go. Next phrase, Kat wanted a little bit more help. She said, I just have one more question, if you don't mind. If you don't mind, you can put this at the start of a sentence or at the end, and it's just a polite little addition, especially if you've already asked quite a few questions. And just one more question, sorry. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, if it's okay with you. So I just have one more question, if it's okay with you, or I just have one more question, if you don't mind. Like I said, you can put it first as well. If you don't mind, I just have one more question. Or if you don't mind, can I ask you one more thing? Before any question, if you want to be very polite, if you don't mind, that's a good phrase to know. So the example sentence says, it's a good idea to get there a bit early to avoid the rush. Okay, so to avoid something is to go around it or to try not to do something, okay? If I'm avoiding somebody, I really don't want to talk to them. I'm not just ignoring them, but I'm trying my best to go around them, right? So I'm trying to avoid the rush. So to avoid the rush, avoid the crowds. The rush is when lots of people are moving at the same time to go to the same place, right? So the last ferry, well, everybody's rushing to get there on time. Um, everybody's thinking, oh, I gotta go, we have to go. So everyone is rushing or moving very quickly. So to avoid the rush is to miss that busy time. So we wanna get there early. So we're not stuck in line getting tickets and we're not pushed off the ferry. I mean, hopefully not into the water, but we don't wanna miss the ferry either because there were so many people. Yeah, I guess the rush can be people. The rush can also be traffic or cars. The lunch rush is when everybody goes to restaurants on their lunch break from work. The lunch rush, the dinner rush. When I worked in a pub, we had the Christmas rush. Everybody was buying their last minute Christmas presents and all came to the pub at the same time. And there were so many customers. So yeah, you get lots of different types. Last phrase, thanks for the heads up. I think Kat said, thanks for the heads up. A heads up or the heads up is kind of a warning. Like, be careful, you could get into trouble, you could get ripped off, you could get lost. So be careful and go this way instead or buy your tickets here instead. I'm trying to give you a warning so you avoid a problem. That's a heads up when I give you a warning and I'm trying to help you avoid a problem. Heads up. Also, I imagine if you're walking in the park and some kids are playing football and they kick the ball up into the air and the ball is flying towards you, the kids might say, heads up, like, watch out, and you can avoid the ball. So if you're trying to warn someone, you give them a heads up. And so Kat's thankful that she's received a warning <laughs> or some help. So she said, thanks for the heads up. All right, and that's the list. Well done, everyone. Uh, this is just day two of our public transport week. I uh, hope you're already looking forward to tomorrow's class. Like usual, if you don't want to wait and you want the extra bonus materials, including the picture dictionary for all of these vocab items, there's also MP3s, worksheets, and pronunciation guides coming later in the week. But you can get all of that right now if you click the link in the store below. Did you hear or learn anything new in our vocabulary class today? What was your favorite phrase? Let us know in the comments below. We love to read your comments and we answer every single one. Thank you so much everyone for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you tomorrow for our next class.
Bye, everybody.